In this tutorial, we'll look at the three required components for the create task. We'll start with component A, program code. At the top, it instructs you to cite any work that was not created by you or your collaborative partner. The only person who may help you write the code is your collaborative partner, who may only help you with the program code you will submit in component A. You will submit your full program code in component A. If you include code in your program that is written by a third party or an AI, make sure to cite the code. You can learn more how to cite in resource number one in the video description. Later on, in component C, you will submit some selections from your component A code. For the selections in component C, make sure that the selected code snippets are your original work. If you want to know more about the Create Tasks plagiarism policy, check out resource number four. Before we start, I will show you a sample program I wrote and reference some of the features in code as examples. This program is designed to keep track of the score in a baseball game as it is played and to record and report on which player's score runs. The program starts in inning one with the visiting team at bat. When I click on Run Scored, it prompts me for the name of the player who scored. The program tracks outs and when appropriate, switches the team at bat or advances to the next inning. If I want to see how many runs a player has scored, I type in their name and press Look Up Runs. Component A includes the entire code for your program. Your program must include the following. Instructions for input from one of the following. The user, a device, an online data stream, or a file. For most programs, the user input will come from the keyboard or mouse. Make sure you don't hard code data into the program and try to consider that input. Use of at least one list or other collection type to represent a collection of data that is stored and used to manage program complexity and help fulfill the program's purpose. Instead of list, I often use the term array, which is a specific type of list. It's not enough to have a list that stores data. You'll need to be able to explain a meaningful benefit to using the list instead of individual variables. In some cases, the program might not be possible without the use of a list. My sample program tracks the runs, outs, and innings in a baseball game. One feature of the program was to record who scored each run and allow the user to look up the total number of runs scored by a given player. Let's look at the source code of my sample program. The College Board uses the generic term procedure, but for AppLab JavaScript, we call them functions. I have redacted some parts of the code and used comments to describe what those procedures do. Suppose we wanted to write this program without the use of a list. Let's say a baseball game can have a maximum of 50 runs. I could create 50 variables to track who scored run one, run two, run three, etc. Then I could use 50 if, else if, else statements to determine which variable should hold each run. When I was ready to total up a player's runs, I could use another 50 if, else if, else statements to count how many of the 50 variables were set to the name parameter. However, this would be needlessly complex. Here's what I did instead to manage that complexity. First, I created an empty list. Whenever the run button is pressed, I get the name and add it to the end of the list. When I want to look up a particular player, I use a loop to traverse the entire players who scored list and count how many times that player's name is in the list. This results in fewer lines of code, is less prone to bugs, and it's easier to add features later. At least one procedure that contributes to the program's intended purpose where you have defined the procedure's name, the return type if necessary, and one or more parameters. Let's look again at my source code. The procedure that I named how many runs takes a player's name as a parameter. Depending on what name is passed and how many times it appears in the list, there will be a different output to the screen. 
It's important that the value passed to your parameter has a meaningful impact on how the algorithm runs. To learn more about parameters and abstraction, check out resource number two, an algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration that is in the body of the selected procedure. I'm not showing you the body of my procedure, but it does include a meaningful use of sequencing, selection, and iteration. Check out resource number three to learn more about sequencing, selection, and iteration. Calls to your student developed procedure. We can see that the how many runs procedure gets called when the user clicks the look up runs button. Instructions for output based on input and program functionality. My sample program takes input, processes that input into new data, and then outputs useful information. You can include comments in component A, but make sure you also include all of the code, unlike what I did. Don't redact any of your code in component A. Now let's talk about component B, video. The video must be done entirely independently. If you have a collaborative partner, you must each create your own video by yourselves. My students generally use the Screencastify Chrome extension, but check with your teacher to see what tool they recommend. The video only needs to show the user interface of the program, so don't worry about capturing any code because it will just detract from the important part. The video demonstrates your program running, including input to your program. In my sample program, I would demonstrate the input by clicking on buttons, typing in pop-up boxes, and typing in a text box. At least one aspect of the functionality of your program. The video should show you accomplishing some task using your program. Most likely, if you demonstrate input and output, you will also show the functionality. Output produced by your program. The output produced by my program was the display of the game statistics and the report about the player's runs. Looking up how many runs a player scored would be the most important piece of my output for my program because it relates to the list and the procedure. Your video may not contain any distinguishing information about yourself. Voice narration, though text captions are encouraged. Your video must be either WebM, MP4, WMV, AVI, or MOV format. No more than one minute in length no more than 30 megabytes in file size. If you have any questions about these technical requirements, check in with your teacher. Component C will contain selections of a program code from your full program code in component A. You will see the component C code selections again when you take the AP test, so be prepared to answer questions about what they are, how they work, and what would happen in certain hypothetical situations. You must remove all comments before you submit code selection for component C. You can leave the comments in component A. Make sure the code segments are clear and legible. For more information on inserting code into the AP portfolio, check out resource number five. Procedure prompt one. The first program segment must be a student developed procedure that defines the procedure's name, and return type if necessary. Contains and uses one or more parameters that have an effect on the functionality of the procedure. Implements an algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration. Let's go back to my source code. For this prompt, I would submit how many runs. If I were actually submitting this to the College Board, I would include the actual code in the body of the procedure, and I would remove all comments. I define the procedure's name here. Here is the parameter that affects the functionality of the procedure. The redacted code inside the procedure includes sequencing, selection, and iteration. Procedure prompt two. The second program code segment must show where your student developed procedure is being called in your program. Here I have an event listener that calls an anonymous procedure. This wouldn't meet the criteria for a student developed procedure but that isn't necessary for part two. What's important is that it shows where the student developed procedure from prompt one is called. I also included enough surrounding code to offer context for what triggers the event listener and what data it passes. List prompt one. The first program code segment must show how data have been stored in the list. 
The data is actually stored in the list on line 11. However, I would choose to include lines 6 through 19 to demonstrate that the list starts off empty and to provide context for when and with what data the list is populated. There are no comments in this selection of code, so I can just copy and paste the code as is into the AP Portfolio prompt. List Prompt 2. The second program code segment must show the data in the same list being used, such as creating new data from the existing data or accessing multiple elements in the list as part of fulfilling the program's purpose. For this, I'm going to use the same code that I used for procedure prompt one. You don't have to use the same code, but for my program, it makes sense. My algorithm uses a loop to count the number of instances of name in the players who scored array. This algorithm is key to a major piece of functionality in my program. Don't focus too much on the example program that I created. I used it because it was a quick and easy way to explain the create task requirements, but there are many better projects. There are many interesting ways to sort, filter, or categorize data from one or more arrays. In the past, I've seen students come up with all sorts of interesting programs and games that meet the project criteria. Check out resource number six for a playlist of lessons that can be helpful for the create task, especially if you are using the code.org app lab curriculum. If you made it to the end, tell me in the comments what programming language or curriculum you are using.